Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nirsh Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. We have been through the topic one of this chapter that is 5.1 test organization. Now we are moving to the next one which is test planning and estimation. In this we'll be talking about some of the things which we have already covered in chapter one. But uh, just a quick uh, recap of things with more detailed way. The very first thing is understanding the test planning activities, which was not listed in chapter one, but I still listed it for you. So I'm not going to discuss in more detail. If you have been following the tutorial, it will help you to understand that what exactly the test planning activities are. So the same slide is present in the chapter one tutorial of the test process about test planning. So it's all about creating the overall plan for the uh, entire process by the test manager and aligning different activities, defining the certain things, schedule the phases of the test process, determining the roles and responsibility, preparing the entry and exit criteria, setting up the tools, deciding on the automation, and every several thing what you can do at this point of time. The major thing comes from here is something called as test strategy and test approach, where uh, generally we roam from the principles of testing that we have several approaches, uh, different approaches for different projects. That means two different applications are not tested with the same approach. But uh, what they would like to know from you here is uh, the test strategy. So test strategy is a document which is created in terms of defining the overall approach of the project, which is done before test planning and test plan will be according to the strategy defined by the test manager again. Now, this is only possible when it comes to a service-based organization where they deal with different types of projects every time. And to a certain extent, even a product-based organization, if their product is changed. So generally, for example, if you start with one product, which is like a TV, and then you move to a cell phone, you might have a different strategy for different products as well, but not commonly seen when you work with only one particular specific object. So... All they want you to know from here is what are the different uh, uh, approaches which we have, which can be either used as standalone or combined together to be called as a test strategy. So we have seven standard approaches which can be used in any project, either standalone or to be combined together. We have analytical approach, which is also known as risk-based testing. We have model-based approach, which is about you know, creating or converting the models uh, from the requirements and then making use of it. Methodical, which generally means that there are some predefined uh, content which you have, which you want to follow for your product. So generally, when it comes to product-based organization, we use the predefined uh, steps or taxonomy, which we can use. Process compliant, when you talk about safety critical or line process or manufacturing process, where uh, anything other than that is not so important when you talk about standards or process, which is more important. Directive, which is consultative as well, where somebody from the senior resource uh, keeps on guiding you instead of uh, having a particular defined documentation process, and there's a consistent support from that person throughout the process. Regression averse is more on the uh, execution of the past test cases again and again. For example, when you talk about continuous integration concept or you talk about uh, the uh, incremental iterative models, uh, this requires a lot of regression to be done. So that could be one. And reactive stands for another approach, which is like uh, here you don't go with predefined process. Rather, you depend on the ongoing results. So as you proceed with execution, you find the outcomes, and based on the outcomes, your plan would depend that what to do next. So if you know the names of these approaches, that would be enough to take up a question from the syllabus because these are the things which are planned or determined by the test manager. So at this point of time, when you talk about foundation, they don't want to know anything beyond this one-liners that what these models are and what their name is. That's all. Here they're giving you a sample criteria, like example of an entry criteria but, and exit criteria as well. But this slide is about entry criteria, where it will help you to understand that what exactly an entry criteria is, which will just determine when to start a process and how do you determine that. So generally, entry criteria can be used for a process, can be used for a stage, or even for the project. So it all depends on the kind of checklist what you prepare, which determines when to start something. So you can have a look at a quick thing here that is availability of the testable requirement, availability of the test item that have met the exit criteria of a previous test level. For example, exit criteria of a unit test can become the entry criteria of the integration testing. 
availability of the test environment, availability of the necessary test tools required, availability of the test data and other necessary tools. So this is a, just a template and you can internally have your own custom created entry criteria for the same. Similarly, we do have exit criteria on the other side, which determines when to stop a particular stage or process. So it will just prove that what you wanted to do, you have done and you, can, you have achieved them so that you can you know, exit the process. Like for example, plan tests have been executed, uh, a defined level of coverage has been achieved, number of unresolved defectives within an agreement, agreed limit, what you ag agreed initially, the number of estimated remaining defectives sufficiently low which will not cause any kind of you know, critical harm. The evaluated level of other non-functional parameters are sufficient. So these could be you know, some of the examples which you can include as a part of your exit criteria. But of course, again, you can have your own custom built depending on the product who you are testing. When it comes to test estimation, generally it is a question uh, to be answered like how much testing is enough. So uh, this question will be answered with a process called as test estimation where test estimation deals with uh, measuring the uh, estimation on cost, time and effort required to be supported for a particular project. And this is again done by the test manager internally within the organization in discussion with the project manager or maybe the test consultants in your organization as subject matter expert or a test director who can give you more input on that. Uh, all they want to know from you here is the matrix, uh, like the example of the two techniques, what can be used. And these are very broadly classified because we do have details of this but in advanced level. So we do have two different ways to uh, do the test estimation. One is the matrix-based and second is expert-based. Matrix-based generally goes with the previous uh, calculations or past records of the execution of similar projects that how much you put the effort and what was the outcome, what was the cost involved, what was the effort required. And sometimes you do have certain techniques which can help you to calculate them. On the other side, we have expert-based technique where people sit discuss together sit down and discuss together on the content and see that what we can do the best for this project. At the same time, you deal with a lot of expertise on the people like, you know, test consultant and other people who can help you with that. So we just need to remember from here in this section that there are two different ways to do it. That is one is matrix based, that is calculation, and the other one is expert discussion. The main thing what they're trying to target in this section is about the factors influencing the test effort like how the test effort can be influenced, that number of test cases to be written, how much testing to be done for each element or a particular project. So we have three parameters, as I told you, like cost, time, and test effort. So test effort is one parameter we, they are trying to introduce you to in foundation level. But all these things comes in more detail in advance. So there are four parameters which uh, influence, like for example, the characteristics of the product, that what type of product it is, like what is the complexity of it, what are the risks involved, whether it is going to have certain you know, undefined paths, how exactly it's going to have an impact on the user if anything goes wrong, and many other factors like that. Characteristics of the development process, that what is the process is all about, which your, you know, your organization is highly mature, you have a predefined uh, process or not, are you trying to do anything on runtime, and several other things like that. People characteristics, which means that what is your team size, what is your team skill set, how qualified they are, how experienced they are. At the same time, we also look at the cohesion between the team uh, within the organization, like the coordination between the development and testing team would help you to define the test effort. And test results, of course, uh, from the terms of ongoing activities, like uh, if your results are giving you more critical defects, you would have uh, more test cases addressed towards that. So you can always go with adding more test cases during the runtime to increase the coverage or maybe find out more critical defects in terms of understanding the defect clustering principle. So we do have these factors which influence the test estimation. Last but not the least, we have got a new topic in this section in 2018 syllabus that is a test execution schedule. Generally, this means that uh, no matter when you create all your test cases, uh, whatever order you create in, you generally do not run them in the same order. We go ahead with a test prioritization, where we say that prioritizing the test cases, prioritizing the test procedures, and so on. So generally here, this is the place where you uh, create the sequencing of the execution of the test cases in terms of prioritization, 
which also includes the dependencies where dependencies would tell you that uh, if this test one has completed or passed then the test two should be executed and that's where you say dependency or uh, until now it's like you know what do you define it as second is the prioritization where priority prioritization can be independent of this like okay first the high uh, high rated or high prioritized test cases must be executed then the medium then the low but it is not completely always possible that the test cases which you have prioritized as high is not having any dependency on the low test cases it might be also possible that a test case with low depend low priority may have a dependency for the high priority test case so sometimes it really becomes important for a tester to take care of these parameters before executing a test that if test 1 which is high in priority but has a dependency on test 4 which is low on priority then t4 test 4 will be executed before the test 1 so we need to take care of every such parameter when it comes to the test execution schedule that what is the priority what are the dependencies and taking care of everything put together and then we align our execution according to that so we just make sure that the everything every criteria is met before we generally hit these screens to execute the test anyways uh, this is what we have got from this section i hope you got the clarity on the content here in case you have not then please feel free to comment below i'll be there to assist you with more details till then keep learning keep exploring thanks for watching the video team i'll be coming back with another tutorial to help you out better on the next content thanks for watching happy learning